Thank you, Ben. That was beautiful. A warm welcome to all of you on this third Sunday in Advent, which is known as Rose Sunday or Gaudete Sunday. That being the Latin word for rejoice. This Sunday symbolized the, by the rose-colored candle and vestments is meant to be an invitation to rejoice in what was traditionally a penitential season. Did we lose Scott? Is he there? I believe he froze. He's probably trying to get back in. All right, well, I'll go ahead and get us started then. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. All right, so it is the third Sunday of Advent. So how many candles are we going to light? One, two, three. That's right. So each, tonight we light the first, second, and third candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is oh. hope. The second candle is huh? peace. peace. And the third candle is joy. joy. <laughs> Try another match. There we go. So, hope, peace, and joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Amen. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with the great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities for the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with, right, with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out with weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Ooh, Redeemer of the nations, come. 
Reveal yourself in virgin birth, the birth which ages all adore, a wondrous birth befitting God. From human will you do not spring, but from the Spirit of our God, O Word of God, come take our flesh and grow as child in Mary's womb. You came forth from the eternal God, and you return to that same source. You suffer death and harrowed hell, and reigned once more from God's high throne. With God the Father you are one, and one with us in human flesh. Oh, fill our weak and dying frame with godly strength which never fails. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight to the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they have been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the throng of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning, St. John's. So today you're going to get to know me a little bit better. Um, my favorite liturgical season is Advent. I really love it. And that's not because Christmas Day greets us at the conclusion of it every year. Um, and it's also not because carb season is in full swing, but I do love the cookies and savory foods that come with this time of year. Um, but it's my favorite because I get it. I get Advent, this season whose tagline is watching and waiting. I relate to Advent in a way that I do not relate to any other liturgical season. And that's because nine years ago, at the beginning of Advent, my family got the call from my mom's nursing home that she was taking the final turn towards death. Watching and waiting took on a whole new meaning for me that year. And maybe this year you get Advent or relate to Advent in a way that you haven't before. 
We've been watching and waiting for nine months now. We've collectively watched nearly 300,000 people die in this country alone. We've watched so many people lose jobs and homes. And we're waiting to mark life's occasions together. The weddings, funerals, baptisms, birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, all kinds of events. We have not gathered the way we would like to. We are waiting until it is safe. We are waiting until our turn for a vaccine. In John's gospel today, we've got an account of John the Baptist telling a story about watching and waiting. The priests and Levites and Pharisees all have a lot of questions for John the Baptist because they're trying to figure out what's going on Things can be confusing when you're in periods of waiting. Does that sound familiar? Does that feel familiar? Amidst and alongside our confusion as we are watching and waiting, there is good news. Today on the Advent wreath, um, we saw a family light their Advent uh, wreath. Oh, sorry. Um, we, we lit a special rose pink colored candle. This week's candle is special because it's supposed to represent the special kind of joy that can be had in the midst of waiting. So that's what I really want to get into today is the joy that is found in the midst of waiting. How do we have it? Where is it? Oftentimes in situations where we are watching and waiting, it's hard to be joyful. Despair can feel so much closer and easier and more accessible than finding joy. When I think about the times where I have been watching and waiting and where I found the joy in those times, the joy was being in community with other people. That's where it came from. Nine years ago, when I was watching and waiting during my mom's last two weeks, waiting for her to die. Joy was found for me um, in a dear friend of mine who traveled with me to see her many times. Though she had never met my mom before her illness, um, she sat with me in, in my mom's room and crocheted with me all day long. And just we just conversed with my mom as if it was normal, as if she had known her for as long as she'd known me. Of course, there were times in those two weeks where I cried into her shoulder. And there were joys that we shared only because of the circumstances we were in. I remember especially one morning <clears throat> as she arrived uh, to my house before we were gonna make the two hour drive to my mom's nursing home. She came out with um, a printed out story that she had written, a short story, kind of a folklore of sorts, um, about some ancient origin of our friendship from before we were born. Reading through it, I, I cackled at the inside joke she had woven in, um, and it was just so special. When I finished reading it, we, we shared a long hug, and, and we both shed some tears. That companionship brought that special kind of joy that we only get in seasons of watching and waiting. Were it not for the circumstances we were in, she would not have written that letter, that story. We would not have had that moment. That joy would not have been experienced. To answer the question, um, how do we find joy in the face of life's inevitable suffering? Uh, I'm, I'm not the only one who thinks this. His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu spent a week together in April of 2015 to be with each other um, in such a way that a whole book could be written about the true nature of joy. The Book of Joy is what it's titled. Um, it's one that I have not yet finished reading, but it really dives into what joy is. 
And to get into this so deeply, to write a whole book about it, these spiritual giants knew that they needed each other and they needed to be fully present with each other. In the book, the Archbishop positions joy as a state of mind that is much bigger than happiness, he says. While happiness is often seen as being dependent on external circumstances, Archbishop Tutu says, joy is not. Let that sink in. Joy is not dependent on external circumstances. If we were to rely on our external circumstances to provide joy in this pandemic, as I waited for my mom to die, we would not have found it. The joy I felt with my friend was very intentionally created. It was not inherently present in the suffering. As is the joy that we might be creating and noticing around us now in this pandemic. I invite you to look for the joy that you and others have created. Take the time to notice the ways that people are showing up for one another and bringing joy that we might not otherwise have had. What joy have you been gifted or created for others in this season of pandemic? Go ahead, type it in the chat box. I wanna see. For me, I've both written and received some handwritten letters with some fun mail, um, which you know I certainly didn't do as much of pre-pandemic. I've gotten to know a few people in my neighborhood better as we are all out for more frequent dog walks. That connection with other people, with my neighbors, is one that I might not have had were it not for these circumstances. At St. John's, maybe you found joy in the cottage meetings or in another ministry that is new this year. Maybe it's in the breakout groups on the third Sunday of each month. I know a lot of you really like those. I do too. Where else? I see a surprise gift of garden lights from our neighbors, totally unexpected. Yes, unexpected gifts. Packing lunches every Thursday. Yes. Expressing and focusing on gratitude. Absolutely. Video visits with new and old friends and family. This little one on my lap, I bet that's a dog or a small child. Working on the drive through Christmas story. Yes, yes. Reunions with classmates via Zoom. All of these are such great examples of, of where we have made joy in this, in this awful set of circumstances that we find ourselves in. And I wanna be really clear. I'm not suggesting that we just look on the bright side or try to paint silver linings on this pandemic. The grief and the loss that we all feel and notice is so real. And we can't, we can't put it aside. We can't brush over it. It just, it is there. What I'm saying is that being community with others is what elicits joy. Making music videos to share, yes. These things that we do to create moments of light and life in this, in this awful set of circumstances, that is what brings true joy. And that is what enables us to, as St. As Paul says in his letter to the Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. Amen.
Holy God, you have spoken through your prophets and called us to make straight the way of the Lord. Visit us with your grace to cause righteous and praise to spring up before all nations as we pray. God has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. O oh God of peace, you have called your people to rejoice always and to pray without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances. Sanctify your church and her members that our spirit and soul and body may be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has done great things for us. And we are glad indeed. Almighty God, you love justice and hate wrongdoing. Guide our leaders and all in authority that they may bring good news to the oppressed, bind up the brokenhearted, pro proclaim liberty to the captives, repair the ruined cities, and cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. God has done great things for us. And we are glad indeed. Compassionate God, look upon the needs of the world. Proclaim the year of your favor and clothe your children with the garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness. God has done great things for us. And we are glad indeed. Gracious God, be among us in this community, that we may be a people whom you have sanctified to testify to the light and to become oaks of righteousness. God has done great things for us. And we are glad indeed. Receive our prayers for those for whom we pray in intercession, especially for our vision outreach ministry and those on our St. John's prayer list, remembering this week especially, Alan, the Araujo family, Eunice Aris, Mary Bluen, Albert Brauer, Lisa Cadwallader, Scott Christensen, the Cook Deaver family, Daniel, Sandra Davidson, Nick De Groot, Susie De Groot, Fred Felder, Jerry and Beth Fiddler, Larry Four, Nancy Foss, Peter Freeman, Gray Gone, Gil Gleason, Lila Green, Greg, Leslie and Esteban, Judy Hart, Allison Hogan, Jessica, Joan Kimber. Hear our gratitude as we offer our thanksgivings and for those celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and transitions this week. Comfort all who mourn, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, as we remember before you those who have died, especially Lorna On, Elsie Byron, Max Casbo, Laura Davis, the mother of Nancy Coe, Susan Freeman, yeah. Dennis Reeve, Jim Teamstra. God has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Loving God, your Advent people look expectantly for the coming of Christ. As the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, nurture our prayers and the thoughts of our hearts that we may receive with joy and goodness of your strength and live in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of Christ be always with you. You may unmute. Also with you. And also with you. Hi, everybody. Good morning. God's peace. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi England. Hi. Hi, everyone. God's peace. Thank you, Sarah. The ocean. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Cynthia. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, thank, thank you, Sarah. Sarah. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Have moved, Go and Kathy. Hello, everybody. Hello there, you guys. It's good to see you. Hi, Lori. Hi, Peter. Life is good. Good and Molly. Hi, Lila. Hi, Ben. Hi, Chris McQueen. Kathy. Oh. And uh, Judy Marr. Hi, Kathy. Fran. Hey, Fran. Hey, Good morning. Here's Susan Pierpoint and Pat oh. and so Sarah Carol. We're done. Oh. Me, you're welcome to sit if you want. You can see Peter Redding at the very Oh, I don't know where Peter is. Good morning and want to welcome everyone who is uh, seeing us on YouTube, Facebook, and uh, he, joining us here on Zoom. Uh, we have a few good announcements. Uh, and so with the first two, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah. Hello, yes. Um, so our Advent meditation continues uh, this Wednesday, December 16th at 6 p.m. Um, if you don't know, um, we're reading Jesus and the Disinherited. Oh, it's on the screen already. Um, and I think we're reading chapter four for this week. Yes, John is nodding his head. So John and I will be um, facilitating that discussion as an Advent meditation. The second announcement is um, tonight at 7 p.m. We will have Compliment on our Facebook Live. That's something that I'm offering through this season of Advent. Um, usually my dog Ruthie is on my lap. So if you want to, to say Compliment and see a little Chihuahua, um, please tune in. I'll turn it over to Ben. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you uh, on Zoom this morning. Um, the monthly, monthly hymn sing for the Chancel Choir is this Thursday, and uh, we're marking um, the liturgical calendar uh, by singing, hopefully, everyone's favorite um, Advent and Christmas carols. It's a little early for Christmas, but as Auntie Mame said, we need it now. So we'll try a few Christmas carols as well. Uh, so please email me. Uh, if you haven't been to one of our hymn sings before, it's, uh, we all have a chance to um, call on each person who suggested their favorite and they get a chance to give us some of their memories of the, in this case, carol, and, and then we sing it together. So hopefully you can join us. It's uh, on Zoom this Thursday at seven. I'm uh, glad to be back with you. Um, I suddenly found myself in with the Presbyterians, and so I, I don't know what happened. Uh, no, not seriously, but uh, anyway, uh, such is the internet. Um, uh, again, I, I am so excited about uh, the Christmas drive-through, and uh, uh, which begins December 18th, that we're putting the final touches on it this coming week. Uh, and we hope that you all receive those wonderful cards so uh, uh, that you could send out to friends and neighbors uh, and remind them of this opportunity to safely have something to do that will uh, literally give them the experience of driving through the story of the Nativity. So um, we do need a few more volunteers if you're so inspired. Uh, uh, we have... Uh, 
uh, uh, people who have signed up on many of the days, uh, uh, but we're lacking some volunteers on a couple of those days, so uh, please consider signing up on the link. Uh, next Sunday, uh, we had planned uh, to do communion um, uh, and, and have communion together, but uh, we, it will be a breakout Sunday where we will uh, uh, instead, uh, uh, at the end of the service, have an opportunity to discuss uh, the service, uh, the sermons, uh, whatever, in small group setting. Um, uh, out of an abundance of caution, uh, given the current surge, uh, we felt that the less face-to-face uh, -face connection uh, was very, very important at this time. So uh, welcome again to the season of Advent, which is the season of waiting. Uh, we will wait and we will uh, celebrate in the new year uh, at the appropriate time. All right, are there birthdays, anniversaries, transitions uh, we can honor today? Please unmute thyself and let us know, know who you are. Hi, Scott. I'm celebrating a birthday last Friday. Sandra, happy birthday. Thank you. Sixty-six anniversary of my ordination to the priesthood. Ed, sixty-six years as an ordained priest. God bless Thanks. you. Congratulations. We're grateful that you're a part of our community. So my daughter's birthday today, and the other one is on the 18th. And Thank so. you, Doug. On the more mundane side, and I have moved. Yeah. And I am surrounded by boxes, and I need your prayers. <laughs> uh, moving, never an easy thing, especially during a pandemic. Uh, Lila's got a birthday. Lila, your birthday. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. And I have a birthday today. Wow. Stephen, happy birthday to you. And I, did you. I see Anne say something? Uh, Crying. It, my birthday was Thursday. Oh, happy birthday, Ann. All right. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us with joy-filled hearts offer the fruits of our life and labor to God.
to wish a happy birthday to Greg Sladoff too, who uh, I didn't acknowledge. Uh, happy birthday, Greg. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank everyone who participated in the service today, uh, especially uh, Kathy, Judy, Bonnie, and Jim, who were our readers and intercessors today. And with that, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may unmute yourself. Bye, all. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.